Hey everyone, it's John from Evolve. Thanks for checking in. Today we wanted to talk a little bit about Rivian windshield replacement. So right here we have a new Rivian R1S. Pretty simple operation to replace the front windshield, but really not so simple when you're dealing with full self-driving capability. In this case, this is a simple windshield replacement that's already been completed here. So obviously there's a few things that you have to remove to access it and some work to install it, but we won't get into those details. But I really wanted to talk about what happens next and what's really required. So on this vehicle, it has an ADOS system, which is an advanced driver assistance system. And with it is a whole suite of cameras and sensors and a lot of other things. Now, all of these things need to be calibrated before you can put that vehicle back on the road. Sometimes you'll hear uh, windshield companies talk about their capability to calibrate uh, some of the advanced driving systems on vehicles. But what I can tell you is very few have the actual capability to calibrate them fully. So a few things to look at on this vehicle is up here in the windshield, we've got uh, a rain sensor, and that's the component that turns on and off and adjusts your windshield wipers in the rain. Well, there's a little sensor inside that windshield that detects the rain itself and then sends the signal that, hey, it's time to make the adjustment. That has to be calibrated in order for it to work properly. The second is the forward-facing camera suite on this vehicle. And so let's look at what's really required to calibrate that forward-facing camera suite. All right, so one of the first pieces of equipment you have to consider in this is an ADOS calibration system. Here we've got a John Bean TruePoint system that's really the only system that is uh, compatible with Rivians. Now it's compatible with a lot of other manufacturers as well. But if you're going to fix Rivians, you're going to need to have this system. Uh, so what we can see here are some targets and some heads that read out some devices on the vehicle. We'll take a look here. These are the targets that are required for a Rivian. And what's happening as you set up this calibration system are the camera suite inside the vehicle are recognizing these targets and beginning to measure things like height and distance so that the computer inside the car can start to understand where they are in space. All right, the second thing we need to look at are these heads that go on the wheels for the vehicle. And you can see these reflective targets are set to the wheels and all four wheels are then set to the ADOS calibration system that we looked at earlier. So what's happening here is the vehicle is now measuring itself to those what look to be kind of QR code targets. And it's starting to recognize, not necessarily calibrate, but recognize where the vehicle is in space. All right, the third component is the software itself and the ability to access the firmware inside the vehicle. So here we've got our laptop and we've got special dongles made for Rivian so that we can attach to the firmware. Now, not everyone can do this and you need to be certified to be able to access that firmware. So the three components are us connecting to the firmware so that we can actually set the calibration. Again, the where is the vehicle in space by setting these reflective targets? And third, the ADOS system itself with the appropriate targets on it. So now the whole suite begins to recognize where it is in space. So with all systems communicating with each other, we now have a shot at actually beginning to the calibration process for Rivian. So one thing to understand is calibration doesn't say that the systems work. Calibration says the systems are measuring properly. So Think about it as if you bought a new watch and anyone asked you if your watch worked, um, you could watch the hand go around uh, or watch the hours change. But if they ask you what time it was and you hadn't set your watch, you'd say, I have no idea. That's what calibration really is. It's setting the watch. So in many cases, your self-driving systems would look okay. So someone could say your calibration is great because you can see that the systems themselves, for example, if you moved your hand in front of something, would say, I read you, but the problem is they don't understand what they're looking at. So is, are we uh, 10 feet apart or 100 feet apart? That's what calibration does is really set your watch. So one of the first things that has to happen on a vehicle is to understand, is the wheel alignment right? Um, why, why is wheel alignment important? Well, think of it this way. The camera system believes that the vehicle is headed straight down the street, perfectly straight. There's a thing in wheel alignment called thrust angle. And 
that is essentially the difference between the plane of the rear axle and the front wheels. You may have seen this in your experiences on the highway. You see it a lot on older vehicles and maybe sometimes pickup trucks. Maybe have you ever followed a pickup truck and you can see all four wheels in front of you. You can see the back wheels here and the front wheels here. Well, they call that dog tracking. And the problem is the, the alignment's out and the vehicle is, although it's going straight down the highway, it's not pointed straight. With ADOS systems, the vehicle believes it is pointed straight. So if you think about it, if the vehicle is pointed uh, in off to the left, let's say by 10 degrees, uh, the camera has no idea that the vehicle is dog tracking. So what begins to happen is instead of measuring the car in front of you, maybe 100 feet away, it could be measuring a cow a quarter mile away. So now the ADOS system saying, cool, I see something in front of you, and it's uh, a quarter mile away, when in reality it's 30 feet away. So things could get really sketchy if you don't wind the watch properly. So this would be an example of a vehicle with a proper thrust angle. As you notice, the vehicle is going straight and pointing straight. So here we have an example, a little exaggerated, of a vehicle with a bad wheel alignment, in this case a thrust angle problem. We see two vehicles behind each other heading in this direction. The distance between the two is 100 feet. But because of this dog tracking issue or thrust angle problem, the front of the vehicle is actually pointing, in this example, at a house that's 2,000 feet away. The system sees the vehicle and measures the distance as 2,000 feet. It could be a potentially very dangerous condition. So this is critical on ADOS calibration. Where is the wheel alignment? So in this case, with this Rivian, the first thing that we have to do is check the thrust angle. So this system, before we do any of the winding of the watch, asks us, please confirm that the wheel alignment on this vehicle is right. By the way, if it's not right, the vehicle will not calibrate. Again, your system may not tell you that you have a bad calibration. How would it know? Your system could say all sensors work perfectly. But if you don't check and perform the wheel alignment, if required, uh, then you've got a real problem with your ADOS system. But you would never know until it's too late. So let's take a look over here. OK, so here we have a Hunter alignment system. And this is what would be required to perform the wheel alignment on this Rivian here. So in this case, with the Rivian we just looked at, it did fail initial wheel alignment. It's a fairly new vehicle. It was not in an accident. It had a simple broken windshield, cracked windshield, but it did require a wheel alignment because it would not pass calibration because of a thrust angle problem. So we've had to bring this vehicle over here onto the system, perform a full wheel alignment, get it back into spec, and then return it to the ADOS system now to perform the ADOS calibration. All right, so we took a look at some of the equipment and some of the processes needed to be able to calibrate the ADOS system on this vehicle. In this case with this Rivian, we, it failed the thrust angle alignment. We had to return it to the alignment rack, perform an alignment, bring it back here, set up the system again, and then perform the calibration through the laptop with our connection through the dongle. So a few things to consider. Hey, if you've got a broken windshield, you've got to really think about things like this. For example, just this equipment alone we're looking at is about $150,000 to $170,000 investment. So not everybody's going to have that. Certainly the guy that shows up in your driveway uh, to replace your windshield will not have any of this stuff. In conclusion, we talked about ADOS calibration and all the requirements between wheel alignment, ADOS systems, and our connection back to Rivian. It's just important to recognize that as self-driving vehicles hit the road more and more, these operations are going to become very unique, and uh, you better make sure you have someone who understands how to do this stuff. That's why we exist at Evolve to be able to support the EV community and especially as self-driving really begins to hit the road. As always, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Any questions you have on any of this, please leave in the comments below and we'll respond on our monthly podcast. Uh, or if you just have a question about anything at all, please hit us up directly and uh, we'll reach right back out to you and answer that. Thanks for watching.